Hallelujah. Amen. Do you get the information I'm passing across to you? I'm not preaching. Hallelujah. I have a message I want to preach. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we together? Do you get it? Hallelujah. So, that from henceforth, see, you can write, you can even write it and read it. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a general assembly of the first one. Hallelujah. Your names are in heaven. Amen. Amen. So when you are here, heaven knows, oh, it is to you and grace that we receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Establish. Hallelujah. That means. So we, I said we just entered into a new dimension. And on the 17th of this month, we are also entering another new dimension. That, I don't know yet what it is. But God has shown that to me ahead of time. So gave me the date. Hallelujah. It's just, I think it's just this morning I remember that, oh, 16 would actually be the third uh, Friday of the month. I say it's new. Now, we are going to have a vision here on that 16th. Hallelujah. The joy for me of having that vision on 16th is that we are going to be praying into that 17th. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that what we pray? We are entering into a dimension. Hallelujah. I don't know yet what it is, but God has shown it to me ahead of time. I talked to you about it the first of August. You remember? Because God has also told me that ahead of time. There are things that God just shows me ahead of time. And in April at this 17th, when God has shown me, I just check.
For the interruption. Hallelujah. The Passion Translation says, I refuse to be ashamed of the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. That's the summary of what we call the gospel. The gospel is the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. Say, for I am thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved. The Jews first, and then people everywhere. Now, verse 17, which is where my message for today really is. Say, this gospel unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness. A perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. And it moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. So this is what the scripture means when it says we are right with God through life-giving faith. Hallelujah. We are right with God through life-giving faith. So it says that we receive life. How? Through faith. Hallelujah. We live life how? Through faith. We receive life through faith. 
live life by faith. Hallelujah. Remember what we say pillars of life are? We say pillars of life are the structures upon which life is built and sustained. Hallelujah. Now, this scripture makes us understand that we receive life through faith. So, faith is a structure on which life is built. And he says, we live life by faith. So, faith is a structure upon which life is sustained. Hallelujah. So, we receive life through faith. And we live life as believers by faith. Hallelujah. And so, it says that the scripture says... That we are made right with God through life-giving faith. Not just anyhow faith. Life givers. It is your kind of faith. Hallelujah. The faith called life-giving one. Living faith. That is the kind of faith that makes us right with God. So the scripture says that we are made right with God through life-giving faith. So... I'm going to be talking about life-giving faith. On Wednesday, hallelujah, on Wednesday, I began to talk about faith. So, I might not be able to go back there today. So, I would encourage you to get part 7 if you weren't um, in the midweek service, to get part 7 and listen to it so that you can catch up with what we are saying. Bible says that faith, um, Hebrews 11 verse 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And I began to talk about how to give substance to your hope. So that it can be faith. The substance of things hoped for. So when substance is added to hope, it becomes faith. Hallelujah. And that's, the, that's what Bible took time to explain to us in Hebrews 11. How the elders, whom Bible told us that they obtained good report through faith. How they added substance to their hope to make it faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith is being persuaded about the word of God. Faith is believing and being persuaded, fully convinced to the point of taking action on the word of God. Hallelujah. Now when we talk about life giving faith, that talks about faith that gives life. Remember, we are talking about the pillars of life. The structures upon which life is built and sustained. So we are talking about the kind of faith that gives life. The kind of faith that will not make ashamed. Faith that works. Faith that produces results. Hallelujah. That's the kind of faith that we are talking about. So, in the course of this teaching, um, I'm going to teach you what faith is, difference between faith and hope. I think I've done this too last week um, on Wednesday, difference between faith and hope. And then the benefits of faith. Why faith? Why must you have a living faith, a life giving faith? And then the characteristics of life-giving faith and how to build the life-giving faith. Hallelujah. So before I get to the... Before I get into the benefits, why you must have life-giving faith, let me start by giving us the characteristics of life-giving faith. The characteristics of life-giving faith. Remember, life-giving faith is the faith that produces results. It is the faith that works. It is the faith that gives life. The whole kind of faith that, you know, Bible says that hope makes not ashamed. Hallelujah. But you know, there are kind of hopes that make ashamed. And people just hope and hope and hope and hope and at the end, the hope is just dashed. Hallelujah. Now, this teaching is so that your hope will not make a shame. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Because when you hear the word of God, God does not have time. God is not to be whining you. God is not whining you. Whatever he says, he means it. Hallelujah. Characteristics of life-giving faith. Of result-producing faith. Number one, it is personal. It is personal. <laughs> I'm just looking at time and I'm like, because I'm, I'm going to give you like between 8 to 10 characteristics of life-giving faith. But let's start from here. Number one, it is personal. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 says that the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by whose faith? By, not just by faith, by his faith. It is true that the just shall live. In fact, Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. That's John chapter 14 verse 19. Because I live, you shall live also. But then you need to understand that you're living. He says, it's by faith. Hallelujah. So when you shout and jump, which is true, that, hey, I shall not die, but live to declare is good. Hallelujah. But he says, the just shall live by his faith. So you need to understand that for that word of God to come to pass in your life, your faith is a requirement. Your faith is required. This faith is personal. The faith that brings life is personal. It's personal. It's not collective. It's not group work. It's personal. The just shall live by his faith. You live by your faith. In this kingdom, there is a spiritual law called be it unto you according to your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. It is to every believer according to his faith. Hallelujah. It is to you according to your faith. Matthew chapter 9 verse 29. There, Bible says, it shall be to you according to your faith. Actually, that's the story of um, where two blind men met Jesus. The two blind men met Jesus and cried unto him, say, have mercy on us. Jesus came to them and said, what do you want? They say that we may see. He said, do you believe I can do this? They say, yes, we believe. And he said to them, be it unto you according to your faith. And immediately their eyes opened and they began to see. According to their faith, they believed, they were persuaded that Jesus was able and willing to heal them and it was to them according to their faith. In Mark chapter 10, you also see again that a blind man met Jesus. Verse 52, Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Hallelujah. A blind man again met Jesus there in Mark chapter 10 and cried unto Jesus, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus said, What, do you, what would you have me do, to, uh, do for you? He said that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. What made him whole? Was it the faith of the crowd? Was it the faith of the church? Was it the faith of the disciples of Jesus? Was it even the faith of Jesus? Your faith has made you whole. So as you go out, you believe you succeed, you succeed. You believe you will fail. Unfortunately, you will fail. You believe you are healed. You will be healed. You are healed. You believe you cannot be healed. You cannot be healed. It is to you according to your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. According to your faith, be it unto you. Jesus can do anything for you and can give you anything. But it is to you according to your faith. Remember in, in Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Jesus entered his own town. His own country. Nazareth. The Bible said that he could do no mighty work. 
He could not even, he could not do miracles. He could do no mighty work. Why? Because of their unbelief. All of them, they looked at him. This one, no, with that carpenter guy. We know his brother and his sister. They say you've been doing miracles everywhere. Oh, yeah, come and do it here. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe, must have desired to at least let me do for my people. But no show. Because of their unbelief. Bible says Jesus marveled at their unbelief. There were two places where Jesus marveled in the Bible. You know what it means for Jesus to be marveled? Like somebody took Jesus by surprise. Like, man, this one too much go. Hallelujah. Two places where Jesus was marveled. One was the unbelief of his own people. Jesus marveled at their unbelief. Kai, you know that level of unbelief? Hallelujah. He marveled at their unbelief. Another place where Jesus marveled was at the belief of the centurion. It's just, it's just, it's just so interesting that there are it's just two opposite things. The belief of the centurion marveled Jesus. He said, Jesus turned around and said to his disciples, oh, the one that are with him that he's been training, said, No, I've not seen such faith. No, not in Israel. I've not seen this. The centurion came to Jesus and said, Hey, Jesus, you don't need to come to my house. Just speak a word. My servant will be healed. But Jesus said, Others are coming. Jesus, please come and come and lay hands on my in fact. They came earlier that Jesus should come and lay hand and pray. Jesus already accepted to go. Jesus knew that he could send a word. But you see, Jesus had to work with what would help their belief system. For them, their belief system is when Jesus comes and lays hands, that's when it will work. So Jesus already agreed to go. Hallelujah. Amen. I was explaining to somebody why, you know, when Christianity, when people began to walk in the miraculous in Nigeria and all those other things, why they had to use anointing oil, use it. I'm not saying anointing oil is wrong, or water, or handkerchief, and all those things. But one of the reasons was that, um, you see, in those days, those are fathers, fathers, you see, there were people who believed in physical things they could see. They go to Babalao, Babalao gives them something that they can touch and speak to and all that. And then they now come to church, you just say, it is done. And they are looking at you like, are you whining me? <laughs> So, God would say, okay, take a handkerchief. So, so long as something that they could see. God would say, okay, take an anointing oil. So long as something they could rub, they would believe. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But you know, as we progress, we get a better understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. So that was the case of the centurion. So, Jesus already agreed to come. But then the centurion now sent a message. Say, Jesus, we don't need to come. Just speak a word. Jesus said, this one is another dimension. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This one is another dimension. Said, I'm a man under authority. And I said to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. Just speak a word, my servant will be healed. That was said, Jesus marveled. And he said, I've not seen such faith. No, not in Israel. So it is so interesting to see. That when Jesus marveled at the magnitude of someone's faith, he marveled also at the magnitude of some people's unbelief. They received nothing. So I'm saying that in this kingdom, it is to you according to your faith. That life-giving faith is personal. It is personal. Remember very well the woman with the issue of blood. Mark chapter 5. From verse 25, Mark chapter 5, from verse 25, I would love us to read it. Hallelujah. Oh, what a father we have in you. What a father we have in you. Always available when we call your name. What a father we have in you. 
Say what a father we have in you. Always available when we call your name. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. And has suffered many things of many physicians. And has spent all that she had. And was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had the head of Jesus. Came in the press behind and touched his garment. Took note of, take, note, take note of that. Say, so when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press. Ah, I said, take note of that because faith comes by hearing. Hallelujah. But after you have heard, there is need to give substance to your hope. So she took action. That's giving substance to what she hoped for. She came in the press and touched his clothes. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude trudging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around, he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole daughter thy faith has made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague hallelujah jesus said to her daughter what has made you whole your faith or was it the faith of other people your faith remember why the disciples were surprised that Jesus asked who touched me. There were many other people touching Jesus. So it was not only one person that was touching Jesus. Others probably even touched his skin. But received nothing. But somebody touched just his cloth. And received what she needed. By her faith. Life giving faith. Result producing faith. First. Many people were there. Everyone receiving according to his or her faith. Those with great faith receiving great things. Those with little faith receiving little things. And those with no faith receiving nothing. And this is the scenario when we come to church. This is the scenario when we come to church. Those with great faith receiving great things. Those with little faith, receiving little things. Those with no faith, receiving nothing. And so they become spectators at the altar of their miracles, their breakthroughs, their encounters, while they themselves receive nothing because they have come with no faith. So every time that you come into God, this is to let you know that you have to prepare because God is always ready to give. As much as you are ready to receive. But you receive according to your faith. Result producing faith is personal. Many touched him. And probably if it was today. Took selfie with him. You know you, they, they can show you. Ah, Jesus now Pagina. Me. I don't know what I have received. So when I joined the Baptist, we will tell you that now my cousin now. In fact, now my younger cousin. I seen you at the guy with six months. <laughs> I said, my younger cousin, you know, anywhere he sees me, he must bow to greet me. If not, I'll knock him. <laughs> Is it because he's doing miracles here and there? And you should remember, I was the one who introduced him into ministry. I was the one who I was the one who even baptized him. Hallelujah. And if John is calling him and he's still doing, you say, you tell the mother, say, tell this boy, you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. I'm telling you. And you know, Jesus did not even start his ministry until the age of 30. And he was born a child. So he grew up. So he had. Ah, they must have said, be showing you pictures they took with Jesus. Say, ah, this guy. He's my guy. Hallelujah. So, like I was saying, there was a crowd. Many people were touching him. Remember that Jesus didn't even, he doesn't allow rest. You know, when they wanted children wanted to come to him and the disciples wanted to stop them, say, no, no, leave the little children, let them come to me. So everybody was coming to Jesus. But with no faith, even those that took selfies with him, they received nothing. They had nothing to show for their meeting Jesus. They can show you the picture they took together with Jesus. But what change did that make in their lives and destiny? Nothing. None. Because they had no faith to receive. And it leads to everyone according to his faith. Someone can be around an anointed man and receive, still not receive anything. Because you receive according to your faith. Jesus asks very wonderful questions when people come to him. You, you left your house, sought a man. When you now get, finally get to where he is, say, this is what I want. He asks you, do you believe I'm able to do this? Cardinal question to be answered. If you believe, no prayer. <laughs> you say, believe until you are to your faith. You do not believe, you can go back to your house. Hallelujah. No, 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 wahala, no struggle. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I love Jesus' style of ministry. I love it. Jesus is not killing himself over unnecessary things. You see him, you want to receive, you receive. In the night, he would have gone, charge himself up in the place of prayer. And then come out during the day. You have faith, you receive. You don't have faith, he will pass you by. Do you know the lame man at the beautiful gate had been there while Jesus was doing his ministry? Jesus would always pass there and then tie into the temple. That guy received nothing because the guy only wanted money. Just like I like the kind of stubbornness of Peter. Peter said, hey, you cannot come and sit here at this gate and be spoiling our ministry. Give us when you say we are not giving you money today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Hallelujah. And the guy got up and began to walk. Hallelujah. It is to everyone according to his faith. To everyone according to his faith. Many touch Jesus, but only one, only one person had faith enough to draw virtue from him. I pray for you today. May you be that person. May you be that person today that will have enough faith to draw virtue from him in the name of Jesus. Someone else's faith cannot carry you and someone else's unbelief cannot stop you. Do you hear me? This is the beautiful thing about this Christian walk. Someone else's faith cannot stop you, cannot carry you. And someone else's unbelief cannot stop you. I believe that I can never be sick. And I will never be sick. Whether you believe it or not does not matter. Hallelujah. Whether you believe it or not does not matter. It does not need your belief to work for me. Hallelujah. Only my belief is required. My faith is required. Hallelujah. I believe that we have come to take over the city. I have come to take over the city. That's what I came here to do. Whether you believe it or not does not matter. That 
that's what I will do. Hallelujah. So, it is to you according to your faith. I can pray for you, but what you receive is dependent on your faith. What you receive is dependent on your faith. Well, if that's the only point I will, I will teach today, that's okay. Just know that it is personal now. Because many people are being deceived though. They get into an atmosphere charged and they are led, they are deceived by that, this thing. Think, you know, we'll just get there and, and you see some people who are crippled get up from wheelchair and they are walking. Whereas someone who has a headache, his headache is still with him and he's going home with that headache. It is to everyone according to his faith. And this is very important. So it is not that your pastor cannot pray for you, but you see all this, pray for me, pray for me, Christianity. <laughs> pray for me, pray for me, Christianity. <laughs> you cannot grow a mature believer. There are places you cannot carry you to. Now, hallelujah. One of the beauties of our generation is online. Also, one of the, <laughs> when that's going to blow up, people will see the effect of all the online prayers that we're having now. Many Christians don't know how to pray and receive anything again from God. Though. What they believe is to get up and join an online prayer and be saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. Not praying. They don't know how to pray. I'm not saying online prayer is bad. Though. When you can, please do join. Hallelujah. We also do online prayers. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you that that must not take the place of you building your own faith. You cultivating your own faith. Hallelujah. And without cultivating your own prayer life, you cannot cultivate your own faith. As I continue, you understand that prayer is required to build faith. Hallelujah. So it is important, very, very important, that you understand that life-giving faith is personal. It is personal. How do you explain it? You get to a place and see fatal accident. Out of maybe 18 people in a vehicle, and only one person comes out without a scratch. To you, according to your faith. Whereas others are shouting, they are going to die. This is person is just calm. Say, driver, <laughs> you can park. <laughs> if driver is no longer there, yourself, go whatever vehicle park. I'm coming out. Nothing is touching me. It is to you according to your faith. It is to you according to your faith. So take responsibility to build your faith. No one else can build your faith. It is a work that you must do by yourself. It is a work you must do by yourself. Building your faith is a work that no one else can do for you. It's a work that you must do by yourself. Hallelujah. We can create atmospheres. We can create the necessary conditions to help you. But you can force a horse to the river, but you can't force it to drink water. Ultimately, you're going to be the one responsible for it. Hallelujah. God has given us all that pertains to life and godliness. What is left for us is to receive. And we receive according to... Hallelujah. We receive according to our faith. We receive according to our faith. I said you should take time. You should take responsibility. You should take whatever is required to build your faith. It's a work you must do by yourself. So how do you build your faith? How? Number one, by hearing the word of God. By hearing the word of God. 
Romans 1 verse 17, Bible says that faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. I love the way the NLT puts it. It says that so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Faith comes by hearing the good news about Christ. Remember what I told you the gospel is? The gospel. That's what gives faith. Before getting to verse 17, it took time to explain what the gospel is. First of all, in verse 16. The power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. To everyone that believes in Christ. Hallelujah. Now it says that faith comes by hearing the good news about Christ. The woman with the issue of blood, how did she get the faith that made her whole? Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. How did she get that faith? In verse 27 of that Mark chapter 5, Bible says, when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. Verse 28, for she said, if I may touch but his cloth, I shall be whole. Hallelujah. She heard about Jesus. I don't know who told her about Jesus or who preached to her about Jesus, but that person must have done a good job telling her about Jesus. And when she heard about Jesus, she said, no, this man that we are talking about like this doesn't even need to talk. In fact, I don't even need to see him. He doesn't need to see me. This man, ah, if I can just touch his clothes with the thing that I've heard about him, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be whole. Remember that this was a man who had an issue of blood. No one needs to be bleeding for 12 years. Hallelujah. Ladies that have uh, menstruation, ask them how the three days or five days, how it used to be for them. Hallelujah. Then somebody's having that, like that, for 12 years. To make matters worse, instead of getting better, she was getting worse with every visit that she made to the doctor or to the hospital. Someone that had that magnitude of issue, that level of challenge, heard about Jesus, and her faith came so alive that she said, come on, my issue is solved today. If I can just touch his clothes, ah, my issue is a very small issue. I love her perception. Now for some people, the one day, they say, ah, you know, for 12 years I've been suffering this thing. And I've had to go from one doctor to another. This one will have to organize a seven days fasting and prayer for it to go. <laughs> the woman said, this one will not even pray. I'll just go. This Jesus that you are saying. This, this Jesus that you are saying. I've heard about him. And I love what I've heard about him. This Jesus can indeed make me whole. I'll just go and touch just the hem of his garment. I'll be made whole. Hallelujah. That was what she said to herself. And then she took a move. She, she made a move. She moved, touched the cloth of Jesus, and according to her faith, she received her healing. Somebody's been made whole today. Somebody is being made whole today. Whatever that has troubled you over the years, today end that thing in the name of Jesus. Every affliction in your life, every affliction in your family is terminated right now in the name of Jesus. She heard about Jesus. The Jesus that can do all things. The one with whom all things are possible. The one that heals all sicknesses. The one that can lift all bodies. The one that strengthens the weak. The one that saves all sinners. She heard about Jesus. Just as you are hearing about Jesus today. Hallelujah. And she came in the press behind. So, hearing the word of God, life giving faith comes by hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Miracle working faith, mountain moving faith comes by the preaching, hearing the preaching, 
of Jesus Christ. I love the way the Amplified. The Amplified says, So faith comes from hearing what is told. And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. When you hear what is preached concerning Christ. So you want to build your faith. Do everything within your power to be in a place where you can hear the preaching about Jesus. And keep hearing. The more you hear, the more you grow. Hallelujah. The more you hear, the more you grow. If you want to build your faith, submit yourself to hearing the message, the teaching, the preaching of the word of God. That's how to build your faith. Hallelujah. That's how to build your faith. Some days I can't tell the number of, even apart from my reading and writing and preparing and, and other, I can't tell the number of messages. I listen to other preachers apart from listening to my own teaching. Hallelujah. In fact, it is listening to messages that made me start using earpiece, if not before. <laughs> Who sent earpiece? <laughs> what am I doing with it? Hallelujah. But for some of you, I don't know, I don't know what you have in your phone. I don't know what you do with your data. I don't know, I don't know what you do. I don't know what you are listening to. Hallelujah. But the more you hear, the more your faith grows. That person behind you, I want to be seeing his eyes. Yes. I want to be seeing your eyes. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing the message about Jesus. Hearing the message. The good news about Christ. The good news about Christ. As you are hearing it, something is moving in you. A transformation is happening within you. So listen and listen and listen. Listen over and over. Again and again. Hallelujah. Once has he spoken, twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. I've told you before now, the least that you should listen is twice. As you are listening to this message now, ensure that you listen to it again. At least once, that's the least. And I do not expect you to dwell with the least. Hallelujah. Build your faith by listening to the preaching. To the preaching. Some people despise preaching. If not that, why would God send preachers? Well, I've just said everybody, go and read the Bible, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. But he sent preachers. Bible says faith comes by listening to them. Hallelujah. Listen to the preaching about Christ. So in a house like this, where we keep preaching, teaching about Christ, every day, ensure that you are listening. It must enter your to-do list. This is the message I'm going to listen to today. Hallelujah. Sometimes, I'm just like, when, when we have taught something, and taught it even over and over, and people still, I still see, do not see people walking in it. I begin to ask myself, what's happening here? Hallelujah. Because the people have not really heard it. Rick Warren says that research has shown, I read that from, her, from his book, that human beings need to hear something seven times before it, goes, before it sinks. Seven times. Hallelujah. That's to tell you that listening once cannot be enough. So listen and listen and listen to the same message. Don't get tired of it. Hallelujah. Make it your routine. Like I've always said, routines are boring. But that's the only way to make champions. Masters are people who have mastered a particular, that's to say, they have a routine in that thing. Hallelujah. Those of you that go to gym, you want to build your muscle. If you carry 
wait or you are lifting something you are moving against the resistance when you do it today when you go tomorrow do you say i'm not doing is it was this not what i lifted yesterday so i'm not doing it again today is that what you do no you keep doing the same thing over and over again until you achieve your result hallelujah faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god hallelujah as you are listening to me now you know your faith is being built that's what the preaching of the word of god does for you listen and listen hallelujah the time of the sermon is perhaps the most important even not one of the most important times in the church and that should be for you every day the time that you're going to listen to the word of god because that's the time that your faith will be built hallelujah amen number two i'm talking about the how we are still in number one that it is personal now under the number one the how let's say maybe a so number one a number one b how do you build your faith building a life-giving faith number b is working in what you have received practicing what you have heard walking in what you have received hallelujah walking in what you have received walking in what you have received walking in what you have received hallelujah you must practice what you have heard hallelujah you really want to build your faith you must the bible says that faith comes by hearing the good news about jesus now when you have received it you have to walk in that colossians chapter 2 verse 6 colossians chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10 bible says as ye have therefore received christ jesus as ye have therefore received christ jesus the lord so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving hallelujah as you have received christ jesus so walk in it walk in him hallelujah walk in what you have received say so build up in him as you have been taught grounded in the faith hallelujah built up as you have received walk walk It is in practicing what you have heard that your faith muscles are built. As ye dear, have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Say, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and then deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Hallelujah. This is very, very important. Listen very carefully. You know, I've heard people say that, oh, because you are a new believer, you cannot do this. You cannot do this. You have received Jesus, also, but they believe that the power of Christ in you cannot do certain things because you just got born again uh, two days ago. Mm -mm. <laughs> His Bible says that you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. He says, do not let anybody deceive you after the tradition of men. They are using everything to make comparison. They are using vain philosophies 
and not after Christ. When the person wants to teach you, let him go chapter what verse what. Hallelujah. You said I cannot do this based on chapter what verse what. You said I can do this based on chapter what verse what. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Now, because this is one of the things that have crippled many believers. A believer is preaching, maybe on the street, and he's ministering and going, and then he gets to somewhere, and maybe there's somebody trying to terrorize people there, terrorize believers there, or terrorize whatever in the name of whatever darkness. And then they tell that believer, no, 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 you cannot go there. Uh, you, have, you have not grown to that point. And the believer will say, okay, oh yes, no problem. Because that's after the tradition of men. That's because the believer has seen that he's the one to do it. And not the Christ in him. Hallelujah. Because if he had known, now what I'm teaching you now is against the popular thing that you have been hearing. And I really want you to understand this very well. Hallelujah. That you can do all things not by your power, but through Christ who strengthens you. One thing that you must learn and learn very well is how to rely on Christ. And not work with your own power. And then you will know that the same one that healed headache is the same one that can heal HIV. Is the same one that heals cancer. It does not take God more power to heal cancer than it takes him to heal fever. Can you hear me? Hallelujah. The same power, the same presence that it takes to heal fever is what it takes to heal cancer. It is Jesus doing the work, not you. Now, I'm not saying do not grow, of course, you know. <laughs> I always teach you must grow spiritually. Hallelujah. But when it comes to the works of God, you must understand that it is not you doing it. It is God. It is Christ. In fact, he has put this treasure in earthen vessels. In weak, earthen vessels are the weakest of vessels. Breakable vessels. That means that there are vessels of gold. There are vessels of silver, diamond, different kinds. But among all these, God chose to put this treasure in earthen vessels. Why? So that the excellency of the power might be of him and not of us. Hallelujah. Amen. Say for in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily in this Christ. So when you know that there is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And know that in him dwells the, ah, in him dwells the fullness of Godhead bodily. So when Christ comes to walk, the whole of God has come to walk. Father, Son, and Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Have come to walk. And then he makes you understand that you are complete in him. Who is the head of how many principality and power? All. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10 verse 19. Hallelujah. So remove that fear. Remove that fear. Oh, somebody was telling me, uh, somebody that, uh, that fell sick and died. And then somebody was telling me, uh, you know, that uh, the person went to do evangelism. I said, stop that nonsense. Don't tell me that kind of story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some years back, some years back, I traveled from Lagos. I was going to do evangelism. I don't want to mention the place because some people listening to me will be able to uh, discern it. So I was going to do evangelism. Everybody, everybody that, that loved me was against that. They're like, hey, this boy, say you would, in fact, some of, some people who did not even know what I was planning. Hallelujah. Some people did not even know what I was going to, or what I was planning. Had dreams or whatever vision shall they have. And, hey, we saw and you died. Do I said, oh, I'm not dying any, not dying anything. That's the way the devil was trying to send fear. 
to stop me from going to preach while I was preparing to go and preach. Hallelujah. I said, no way. I'm going. Everybody, this is, I went. Of course, you can see me standing here preaching again today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that tells you I did not die. In fact, nothing happened to me. They gave me food and everything there and I ate if I was well fed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. In him dwells the fullness of Godhead body. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Hallelujah. Ye are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So walk in that which you have received. As you have received Christ, so walk in him. You receive Christ as one who can do all things. Walk in him as one who can do all things. How would you receive Christ unlimited and still walk as one who is limited? The wind bloweth wherever it listed, and so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. For he that is born of the flesh is flesh, he that is born of the Spirit is spirit. The wind bloweth wherever it listed, and so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You cannot receive Christ, you are limited, and still walk as one who is limited. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 that you may know what is the unlimited and the surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power in us who believe. Which was demonstrated when he raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. The power that is at work in us, which is the power of Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost, demonstrated by God, when he raised Christ from the dead, it's unlimited. It's unlimited. It surpasses all. And so we are seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. You are complete in him, who is the head of all principalities and powers. So when you get to anywhere, any power appears, you come and say, yes, I recognize your power, but I'm your head. Hallelujah. Principalities. You can come. I am your head. Hallelujah. You are complete in him who is the head. Of all the principalities and powers. Hallelujah. So walk. In the same way that you have received Christ. As you have received Christ. So walk in him. The woman with the issue of blood. When she had heard of Jesus. She moved immediately. She did not allow naysayers to stop her. If that woman had conferred with some others, they would have said, ah, your case is this difficult. Go and see where Jesus is. There are people who, are, who have been following him from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho or wherever, and nothing is happening to them. Hallelujah. But she did not allow that. She did not allow that. She did not allow those ones, those who were not receiving their own miracles to stop her. Hallelujah. She did not allow those that failed to stop her. When she had heard of Jesus, she moved according to the Jesus that she heard. She moved. She moved immediately. No delay. No waiting. Until she's maybe 10 years in the faith. You know, there are things they will tell you, okay, maybe when you are 5 years in the faith, uh, maybe you still have to. Hallelujah. Amen. Have I told you that your Kairos, your appointed time, is the day you get understanding. Hallelujah. It's the day you get understanding. And it can happen immediately. Hallelujah. Amen. When I entered into the realm of divine health, that I can never be sick, it was not because I've been a Christian for long. 
But just the day Romans 8 verse 11 dawned on me, that if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead, that was not the day I received the Holy Ghost. I received the Holy Ghost five
They are so in boisterous way instead of seeing the word of God. But we know that our enemies are that our little affliction, which is for a moment, was for us a far more eternal and exceeding weight of God. Why do we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen? For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hallelujah. The things which are not seen. Looking at the things which are not seen. Not looking at the things which are seen. Today, you receive the grace to look not at the things that are seen. But now that you look at the things which are not seen. Amen. To focus on the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. That we walk by faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. So take action in faith. If you are sick and in bed, get up in faith and you see yourself in. Go right at the trap in faith. Take action in faith. Buy that ball and fill it in faith. Submit it in faith. Make that proposal in faith. I wish I could tell you that challenge is no longer come. But that will not be true. 
Your deep coming will keep triumphing. Hallelujah. We keep conquering. We keep winning. We keep rising. Hallelujah. The way we go, we conquer it and stand on it. Looking for another one to conquer. Hallelujah. For what is the is born of God? Overcome the world. And this is the thing that overcomes the world. Our faith. Our faith. Our faith. We are come by faith. And decide your faith today. Do not let fear of failure or failure stop you. Do not let fear of failure stop you. Do not allow what if it doesn't work stop you. Do not allow the story of those who fail stop you. Number one, 
I said that I didn't pray, it's personal. Number, then I began to talk about how to build this personal thing that is my gift. And we said number one is by hearing the word of God. Number two is by walking in the word that you have received. Number one is by hearing the good news about us. Number two is by walking in Christ as you have received, in practicing what you have received. Number three, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Jude verse 20. Jude. Jude has only one verse. Jude verse 20. The Bible says, But ye be Lord. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. But ye be Lord. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Your faith can be built up, sister. Your faith can be built up, brother. You know, many times I see people maybe in the place of challenge that they are praying and I really wonder what they are praying. You don't resist the devil just by praying. But you can build your faith using prayer to resist the devil. Hallelujah. You remember, for instance, when they called Peter, that Dorcas was dead. Remember what Peter did when he got there? Peter Paul left this Dorcas body here. Peter left that one, Paul, and faced the wall and began to pray. What do you think Peter was doing? I believe Peter was afraid of the Holy Ghost, building his faith. And by the time he was turned up, he thought that this Dorcas and said, Now, Peter, arise. And they asked God, oh, Hallelujah. Amen. You can build up your faith. You know there are things. This, this is why some of us, you see, some of us are always praying. Some of us are always praying. I'm sure some neighbors of people must have been like this. He's okay, son. Every time you see his mouth is moving. He's not chipping something, but he's saying something. What is he always saying? Hallelujah. We keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. There are things you see, and first signs you are like, is this possible? Ah! But when you, you begin to build yourself up oh, in your most holy faith, by the time you see it, the baby looks just for you, look, is it just this? How you know? Get out. But he belongs, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Bring it in the Holy Ghost. That's why that's what I think is first of all. That says that he that plays in an unknown tongue and defies himself. That's the building and edifice of him. He's building up himself. To persuade him that the Bible has said, For you belong, build yourself up on the foundation of your most holy faith. Continually progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher. Pray in the Holy Spirit. You rise like an edifice, higher and higher in your faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. So when we say come, let us pray, it is not in vain. I pity those who miss prayer meetings. They don't know the effect of that. No, because nobody's going to vlog you. But the, the way your faith will be, your faith will tell you that you missed a class. The, 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 the incapacitation of your faith will be the vlogging that you miss. When you need to rest the dead with your faith, but you're not able to, that's when you know that you miss reality. I pity those who miss teaching meetings too. We are just supposed to hear and grow in faith. And they feel that they have other things for Jesus. Don't worry. Continue. The day that you need that faith to walk, then you know that you miss the class. When you are on the head, you need to pray. But if you know, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Rise higher and higher like an enemies. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Can you tell up and begin to pray? Give it up yourself on your most holy faith. Kapa Esusia katoke pilatos. Ibranatu sake pinsi maseta. Isha kwa kwate esusia bara. Ira kwa kwate shina kwate te. Ira prakatu seke panya moloji bara. Rehelia kuta na pata esusia. Get up, 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 get up,